now that uh, Xeno Threat is over for me, um, I'm going to watch the ISC from this week. It's called Inside Star Citizen Fuel Injection Winter 2022. Let's, let's take a peek here. The experience oh, we're damn, trying to build free? with refueling YouTube is TV? a bit of an interconnectedness between the players. It's the first player-to-player -player trade that we will offer in the game. Refueling is another support. Okay, so like we, we have to start out, and I've been asking this specifically, is... Um, I've never seen anybody in type in chat yo out of fuel need help <laughs> like never dude ever never seen it not once uh i've run out of fuel in the thousands of hours that i've played star citizen uh twice quantum fuel and i don't pvp very much so today i was playing xeno threat and i was running out of fuel uh, i ran out of fuel twice so i had to go back to the station and refuel twice and okay cool so the need for a starfarer to be there may make sense but what i question is is why would i choose to go to the starfarer over the station uh which is quite quick quite easy you land a couple clicks and you refuel uh I, I don't understand yet, and I'm, I'm actually, like, posing that question to you guys because I still don't really get the reasoning behind it other than what I'm seeing in chat. This is prep for pyro where there are no systems. Like, type a one in chat if you think you're going to get pyro this year other than seeing it at CitizenCon. Like, I don't... I don't see it... Um, it seems like a relevant thing to reach star citizens goals at some point um but i don't see it yet in star citizens future so i don't know it's like one of those things like why would this be a priority if i think we all know we're not getting server meshing by the end of this year uh i i, I really hope it does but yeah um so that's just like what like uh i always ask why i'm not i'm not saying why would you do this don't you have better priorities i'm literally asking why because i don't see why i would choose a station over this currently um but again i understand the pyro angle it's just the pyro angle is a little weird right now because pyro's probably pretty far away it's a career that we think is very important for star citizen yeah, road to pyro, right? Road to pyro that will probably Until see at CitizenCon, but not able be in our to own get hands. Fuel out That's of what I think. The thin air, and that was not the goal for all ships. That was supposed to be something very specific to certain ships that have that functionality. Right. Um, that was not the original design. But then when they made the the one hundred I, I think it was, then they changed the whole fuel design and said single seater ships like this are not going to be able to scoop. Um, and then that's when things changed and okay. Like I definitely saw the value of needing to refuel today. I did, uh, while playing Xeno threat. It, it, I really see it. I just don't see how a Starfarer can be close by yet until we're in a system like Pyro. That's going to be the big difference. Right now, all of the ships that let's say are basic fighter ship, they're not going to have that functionality. They will have to rely on someone bringing fuel to them. In our first iteration of refueling right now, we sadly don't have the quantum beacon set up yet. So if you run out of fuel, really? you ask for someone in chat. Okay, I briefly, I briefly went over this beforehand, so I, I didn't actually watch this closely that's disappointing that they don't have the beacons yet um that stinks but this is planned for 315 right who owns the stuff or 317 sorry so the 
the idea behind it would be maybe they could get the beacons ready in time. And if the beacons take that long, I wonder if there's like some tools they can make or do something to tie beacons into gameplay easier, quicker, something like that uh, for the future. Because beacons, like the medical beacons were pretty cool uh, and could be, if if medical worked really well, like people weren't like, you know in the ground, high, you know, that kind of thing. And there weren't all the issues around medical and the server performances and all those things that we have now, medical beacons would be pretty neat. And um, I, I would think that's kind of paramount for this, but Farah okay. To come by and refuel you. Yeah, like no fuel, this please help. Like the star Farah needs to get fuel from any station. Just delay it until you have the Instead beacons. Instead of buying it into that's the how I ship's feel. fuel tank, you buy it into the Starfarer's fuel pods, which can be filled either with quantum fuel or hydrogen fuel, depending. Yo. Okay, look, look, look. Refinery is on there already, which is really awesome. And these are all the pods on the Starfarer, and it's hydrogen, quantanium. It's all different things, and you can fill it up. This is a very cool UI. And it also seems like the co-pilot would be the one maybe managing this. Deploy, boom. Then there's an overview button, payment, things like that. Actually really, really cool. Nozzle close, nozzle controls. Depending on whatever is the need on the market. This is on the rear gantry panel. Oh, dude, that is actually awesome. So this is like... um. Aside from turrets, this is the first multi-crew gameplay really we've seen in a long time since we were able to like move power to shields way back when to, to make that those shields power up quicker. Uh, very, very, very cool. And yeah, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. And... I wonder, can a Starfarer transfer from one Starfarer to another? I doubt it. We do this through the current service app that we have updated. So the same way you used to repair and refuel your ships before, now you will have some... Easily the biggest gameplay added for over a year. Ah, oh, man. It, I would agree with you if there was a real point behind it. Um, but I just don't see that. So hold on. Let's we do go this back. through the current service app that we have updated. Okay. Repair, restock, refuel quantum, refuel hydrogen. So they did it separately. Uh, there's no rearm though. I guess restock would be rearm. So the same way you used to repair and refuel your ships before, now you will have some extra controls that will let you uh, decide what goes inside a fuel tank. Dude, that's Once awesome. you have purchased the fuel and you want to adjust the price that the others have to pay for the fuel that you have in your stuff there right now. That's sick. At this point, the refueler player has to fly all the way to where the person is stranded, in the middle of nowhere, and the docking... Because that, that ability has to tie into more things in the future. Like, that is actually really cool um yeah operation I like that. can begin once they have talked with you they use the same movie class interface to make a request for fuel yeah we're introducing says, something called an escrow I service Sorry, I'm going to look back at that because I just want to look for, uh, so this much SCU, like, like we're, we're, um, standardizing things, SCU units and everything, right? So this much SCU, that much SCU, this is going to be the cost per, this will be the total cost. And then you confirm the purchase actually pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah, we're I like introducing that. something called an escrow service that basically takes the money for the transaction and only starts paying it out as the transaction advances. So if for whatever reason uh, 
you either cancel the transaction or pirates show up and you have to do an emergency and dock, there should be no money loss as fuel is paid for as it is dispensed. That's kind of cool. And that's also like a way to, um, to transfer money between each other as well. Once the payment request was received on the Starfarer, you have to open the dedicated fuel pots that hold the dedicated fuel for that transfer and activate the nozzle. You have to remember that uh, the target ship will only take as much fuel as they have actually paid for. Uh, so if you, uh, if, you know, if somebody has asked for 500 units of quantum and you open the nozzle at full throttle and, you know, send 2,000 away, well, then most of that fuel is just going to spill into space and you're going to lose it. And so there's a bit of a, yes, people want somebody who's very fast and efficient, but don't burn your own fuel. Okay, so Once I guess you just the entire you got to pay attention to it. fuel was delivered to the dock ship, the attached ship can undock and both parts. I hope we can use, like, peripherals to raise and lower that. That would be cool. The nozzle, little nozzle gameplay, maybe. These can go that way. <laughs> right now, we are still iterating a lot over the UI parts. What we don't want to do is throw all the data directly in your face. It should all be readable and accessible for all the players. As we keep delving further and further into other solar systems, we do not want to create this gamey thing where there's always fuel for everything. There's always everything you need. You yeah. might end up in systems where there is nothing. So they're implying There's no civilization at all. There are no stations. There are not even people. There needs to be that scarcity of resources. And if you want to get a major endeavor going, you have to think of all the logistics of it. And fuel is one big part of that. I, I like that. I like that. I, I just wish that that was the case where we are now. Um, and I don't know how there would be a way where we can take the Stanton system and create some level of scarcity for things. I think the only thing would be cost. The issue is, is that you can't create fuel. You can't create fuel. You can only remove, buy it. Hello. You can only buy it. So yeah, that's a, uh... so you can't, but you basically can't go currently in a one system scenario. You can't go off of the cost of it because the Starfire has to buy it in the first place and they would probably sell it to you at somewhat of a profit. So it's still cheaper to go to a station rather than here. I don't know. I don't know if I'm like 100% buying it for the state of Star Citizen now, but it obviously the tech for the that escrow system and the transfer and the setting a cost is very good. So all of the things that come with it could be really good for future stuff or future actual points to refueling but i just don't buy refueling yet as like this epic thing that we need but it's a good step in the right direction still which is better than nothing i guess right so it's refueling is the next major milestone for life in the persistent universe and is making its long you should be able to debut and star so, citizens upcoming off of three seven uh, before we move on you should be able to make it is what i think is uh i would love to see the ability to actually make the fuel uh, they they did show a sprint report of them taking the Starfarer and getting it ready for fuel canisters. They did show refinery on the UI there. Like, it is coming. It's just a matter of... It, it's in their plans. Is anybody working on it? If they are, when are they? Maybe we should look at the progress tracker. I don't know. But it's, uh, it's one of those things that ship-based refueling is something that is... Or refining, I should say. Ship-based refining is is the thing that would really turn up that uh, refueling to 11 for me. 17 release as we continue our journey towards Pyro throughout this year. And up next, a new way to traverse the surface of any planet or moon. Let's find out more about the recently revealed hover quad from Consolidated Outland. Yeah, yeah they can't buzz me now because everybody already knows. Dude, you changed the your streamer name? Is... No. Uh, what do I want to say? It is an all-terrain vehicle 
I've forgotten the word I want to use. Pointless. Uh, exactly what it sounds like. Hovers. <laughs> so this is quite a bit different, uh, both visually and philosophically, to a lot of our other ground vehicles. Our other two gravlevs, both of which are armed and shielded, the Hovercore has neither. It's much more focused on the ability to travel across the surface of the planet rather than start fights or bring a friend along. It's got an inventory on board, so anything small you find you can put on board. I won't be pausing this section very much. <laughs> it is because cool to see the story. It's a wider though, wheelbase, so to speak, or bigger grav levs. It's able to account for those changing variables over a rocky surface. Whereas something like the locks, yes, it can go like a Their bullet in a bullshit line, justifications to sell things are so the insane, lock, lock dude. They just get worse the and worse. Going to. Like it all, it just continues it's to get worse. Something we've actually it's had so in hilarious. the pipeline for quite a while it was a nice little add on that we did as part of the Consolidated Outlands Nomad concept development. The original concept for the Nomad was designed with the Hoverquad in the back. So that was one of the big concerns we had when developing the vehicles to make sure that it could in fact fit in the back and you can drive it in the back. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. A good sort of use case for this is you've landed on a planet in your parent vehicle um, but for whatever reason you do not want to carry on in that vehicle or the, the place you want to actually go <laughs> the is just too right compact, maybe down a cave. So, so you... a good use case for this would be uh, you literally making up a use case <laughs> like for no reason, Need for whatever reason. To transport like, you what? to your destination. This kind of gives you the ability to really enjoy and feel the environment more than you would when you're 6,000 feet above it, you know? You're right there, you're down at the base, and you can touch and see and smell everything around you. Smell, okay. Smell tech coming. That so what did we cool. learn this week? He went under. Well, we learned that refueling brings with it a new journey towards additional support mechanics in Star Citizen's persistent universe. That it's time to dust off your Starfare ahead of the next big race like the Stand-In 7 or the Daymar Rally. And that the Hover Quad is here to expand the universe's gravel of offerings. Now, don't forget that Xenothread is returning. Check out- That's all they needed to say. The Hover Quad is here to expand the Gravlev offerings. Done. You want a different looking Gravlev? This one's got like uh, the the more gold standard bips, bits and bobs. There you go. Done. Check out the recently okay. published This Month in Star Citizen post on the robertspaceindustries.com website for details on everything that's happening in February. And tune into Twitch tomorrow to see Director of Graphics Engineering, Ali Brown, discuss all things graphical on Star Citizen Live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. All right. Looking forward to next week. Uh, that was that was decent. I think the refueling thing is super interesting, but more from the additions they've made to the UI and capabilities of those buttons on the UI rather than the actual refueling mechanic. I don't know what you guys think, but that would be my takeaway from today. So uh, thank you for watching. Obviously, this is going to be up on YouTube. If you guys are watching it on YouTube, I do live stream on Twitch every day uh, but Monday, and it's at 6.30 a.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash saltymike. If you guys are here watching on Twitch, this will end up on YouTube, uh, and this will be on Salty Mike 2. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, yeah, like, like and describe. See you later.